On the skis with a stick when you fold a nigga. Nah, when you fold a nigga. 400 in the cave for you trolling niggas. Ha, huh? for you trolling niggas. Gang in the building need to load the pitch. And all my niggas real, so don't load a filter. Heading for the hills where the slopes to kill you. But my skis certified like we box for real though. What's going on, man? It's your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are back on the Industry's Most Wanted podcast. Listen, I got my brother checking in with me today, and he also brought a guest with him. Shout out to JaVinci Roy. What's going on, bro? What's happening? Hey, Amen. I, like, I feel like I just left. Listen, we had like just we had the most amazing conversation last time you was here. We did. You know what I'm saying? We made a couple little upgrades, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, who, got, who you got with you today? I got my partner, my business partner. Uh, Mr. JG2, I like to call him Jerry Gibson, because <laughs> he like to handle a lot of business. Um, man, introduce yourself. <laughs> he a business, right man. man. You, you, you talk, you talk. Yeah, man, uh, it's one and only, I say the one and only, because there's only one me. I know that's, that's but, right. Uh, uh, Jerry Gibson, also known as JG2, CEO of Ruthless Killer Records. Um, man, what other titles I hold, bro? Uh, Ooh, manager, promoter, entrepreneur, a dad. Uh, we made that yes, clear. Definitely a father. <laughs> that first <laughs> before anything. Right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, just uh, you know, entrepreneur out here independently making. Man, well, thank you guys for both being here today. Um, you know, as we said before we came live, me and JaVinci, we go back to when he was Stats 441. Mm. Y'all don't know about that, huh? Yeah, that's, 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 ooh, man, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's years ago. We come from the same state, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. We both Florida, you know? Absolutely. Um, so we got a lot to talk about today because, you know, um, just let's give them a brief history, though, because I want them to understand that, it took a lot of work for you to get to where you're at because you're making a lot of moves, both you guys. Um, yeah. It, like I said, I, I think the, the funny thing is I think with me and this dude over here, we kind of have a common ground because we both started off as artists. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we do for our artists and a lot of stuff that we do for artists, we've had to go through ourselves. So it's a, lo- a little bit of an easier transition for us to kind of really work with artists and really do what we do. Um, him has been a label head. Uh, you remember when we were talking last time about me accepting the A and R position? Yes, it's, that is his label. Okay, so it only He's made sense to bring him here. It, it, it only makes sense. Um, <laughs> like I said, we went from like we. There's so many different platforms. Like with me bringing an artist to him, getting my artist signed with him, um, and then that going into turning into me being the A and R of his company. And that turned into us being business partners and investing in tours together with our respective companies. It's like just a natural progression. So, you know, I had to make sure that you know, this guy comes with me. I'm like, we're standing beside each other a lot. And then there's a third, a third one of us, um, DJ Rome. He's with us a lot too. So, okay. That's you know, dope. Right now we just, you know, making our rounds right now. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about you being an A&R since we're on the subject of it, okay? Because I think there's a, a lot of misconception about what an A&R actually does. Artists don't, I don't think, completely understand. They just think, all of them think, I got to get to the A&R, which they do for sure. Mm-hmm. But break down, and it could probably vary from label to label. They may have different mm-hmm. responsibilities. But for you and your position, your A&R position, you know, at his label, what exactly is your responsibilities? My biggest responsibility um, is to help develop the talent okay. that we have um, and help, you know, pick the right records and make sure that we're going in the right directions. Me and Deanna Freeman, who's actually um, another A&R at the label, we pretty much partner together and we figure out, like, hey, these are the right records. These are records that's probably not going to go. Yeah. This is not going to be accepted. Let's not go in this direction. And we really kind of help the artists go in the right direction, along with searching for artists, which is a whole nother beast in itself <laughs> because everybody feels like they're ready to be signed. Everybody feels like they're, they're, um, they're ready to go. And that's not necessarily the case. It's definitely not um, necessarily the so case. So a lot of times <laughs> we're doing listening sessions and doing things and we, you know, consultations and really kind of critiquing and making sure that you're ready to go as far as your music sonically. Um, you know better than anybody how much, how anal I am when it comes to like sonically. I've sat in on his sessions before. It's to perfection. To perfection. So, (laughs) um, so like, you know, and, and just really, really, really lock in with the artist, um, his artist, um, wholehearted, who's been signed with the label for, for a while now. Um, it's pretty much like the, the flagship of the, of the Understood. Label. Yep. And me and him have now become really, really close as far as working and, and really, um, you know, going behind this guy's back and 
really working together and, <laughs> and locking in and, and, you know, and trying to make sure that, you know, we're, we're taking the right records to, to the CEO and not just anything, not the, just throwing things at the wall and seeing if it's going to stick. Yeah. Um, and just taking the right records. And, and I think, you know, we've locked in a lot. Um, he trusts me with those artists. He trusts me to really find the right artists and, you know, me and Deanna just we we go head first in with it. So it's it's a little like I say, it does di- it it kind of differentiates between labels of what the A and R does because some people have a whole entire A and R department. Correct, right, exactly. And our A and R department is two people deep right now. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, a lot of stuff that we handle, you know, we kind of play off of each other. Um, you should hear me and Deanna on the phone together talking about what what's not going to go and what's going to go. So it's, 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 um, it's a, it's a new transition for me. It's, it's a new role. Um, well, congratulations. Yeah. It's a new challenge. Uh, and I, you know me, I'm, I'm going to accept all challenges. So Facts. it's dope. I, hey, I love challenge it. accepted. Challenge accepted. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to come over here to you. Um, give us a, the backstory on your label, how it came together. All right. Um, uh, I always, first I'm going to start with the name Ruthless Killer. I always, you know, people think, some gangster stuff when you hear Ruthless Killer. <laughs> um, but now, nah, Ruthless Killer, the name, first of all, it comes from uh, a name that me, my cousin, my brother, and our other cousin. We was 13, 15, 15, and 11. In Albany? Nah, this actually Calhoun County. Oh, okay. We live, we've done Where's that at? That's in Morgan. Morgan, Georgia, next door to Albany. That's how I like it in the, in the country. It's in the country. I would love that, though. I, yeah. I, I like the country. If you, look, <laughs> I always go there, like, if I need a peace of mind away from the industry, city life, I go there. No cell phone service, no plan. Oh, I need no, to visit there. I love yeah. places like that. If you want to go where nothing is, yeah. Calhoun County is where to go. Then, <laughs> then I'm going to have to put that on my phone because I'm going to visit there. I promise you. Well, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to say peace but that's what i like yeah yeah absolutely, absolutely. okay but uh pretty much uh the name ruthless killer come from that on um, one day me and my cousin jacques um i came up with the was it the ruthless or the, one of us came up with ruthless the other one came up with killer okay we wound up putting them together got you well jacques wound up passing away um eighth grade year of 98 mm. um he drowned accidental drowning oh my gosh and um so before he, you know, before we buried him, um, that was like my big brother. I was always the oldest, so I never had a big brother. So yeah. he was who I looked up to. Understood. So I said, before they lowered his casket in the ground, I I, t- I remember touching him. I said, because the world going to know about you before I leave. Damn, so didn't know, didn't know how I was going to do it. Music was, I didn't want to be a rapper. Didn't know how to do none of that. Just so <laughs> happened. Everything just comes into play. Absolutely. Music came into play. Uh, I uh, got with a partner of mine. Dude named Travis Williams, which is going to be funny how it all ties together in a minute. Um, Travis Williams, my best friend in high school, he taught me how to write music. Okay. The first song I ever wrote was called Plain Raw to a Wu-Tang Beat. So, taught me how to write, how to set up songs, boom. Still didn't know nothing about the business, just writing music. So, I was, what, 14, 15 then. Then just, as I got older, start, you know, everybody started rapping. So, it was like, okay, move to Daytona Beach. Got my first little crew together. We were the Ruthless Killers. I was the leader of that crew. About what year was that? Daytona Beach was 2005. Okay. Because yeah. I'm from Florida, and that was heavy in my time frame, you know, when I was really, like, you know, diving into loving hip-hop and all that. So I was just, <laughs> maybe I heard of y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know, you, you probably didn't because, again, we was just moving mixtapes. I didn't understand the business. I was just like, like, I was doing business to the point, like, I would do shows, and then the little money from the shows, I break it down with the whole crew instead of going back in and reinvesting in the future projects. Right. So not understanding the business, but trying to be the big homie. Right. Understood. You know, so as I got older, I went through one bad deal, and this is what drove me to be independent. I had one deal, signed on the West Coast with a company that no longer exists, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, pretty much. Supposed to be in the joint venture. I had just had the number one record in Bermuda. I went seven weeks number one. So that at that time was the longest number one record with my single Shorty There You Go. In Bermuda? In Bermuda. How did yeah. you catch buzz in Bermuda? Look, <laughs> in, the internet is something else. It nah, for real. It never been. That's, that's facts, bro. They caught wind of the record, and when they debuted it, I debuted at number one. Did you ever visit there? Never been. I actually got nominated for an award over there. Bro, Never you need went. to you need to put that on your list. Look, Go visit. I did. Well, now I got a passport. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing you know play. But again, when you twenty something, we going, we're going we to Barbados. Right. Well, he's talking about when we going. Well, you know, 
Get you getting your bathing suit together and say, let's go. Oh, I'm trying to get in the gym with him. I'm trying to, you know, when I, you know, when I get Yeah, this guy the right here, he a, he a whole, a whole, uh, what's your bodybuilder-ish, you know what I'm saying? I, That's told, I told the whole tour he can't take his shirt off. We getting him with special design sweaters for the tour, so you know. Yeah, I'm going to pass out on the, I'm gonna pass out on the tour. I know, right? Be hot as hell. Pass right out on but the yeah, tour. But long story short, fast forward, I actually left music. 2011, personal issues, divorce, things like that. Yeah. I love music alone. Kind of killed my drive. Um, Took like from 11 all the way up to 17, 18. I got approached by artists. Artists was dope. But again. Want you to manage them? No, they wanted to like. Collab? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I was like, well, I always throw stuff to the creator. And he'll let me know like. That's what you got to do. If he slam dunk it, then I know it's to go. So I, I kind of said this thing, well. If I'm able to sign this artist, I'll restart my label. Made the artist a proposal. It was like, yeah, let's get it. Started the paperwork, started paperwork, LLC, signed the artist. And this I know was meant to be. We never released a record together, mm. me and that artist. But because the creator know how I'm set up, it had to happen for me to really go forward with it. Right, so absolutely. That artist was just to get me back in position. So now I understand it. Jumped out, you know, artists here and there, boom. But then the one artist that actually called it stuck, um, I was in a group. The group got the label some buzz um, or whatnot. We actually nominated for a couple awards this year, uh, the ATL Rap Awards, which happened next weekend. It's, which is next weekend, yeah. absolutely, yep. I'm nom- we're nominated for, um, what it is, Album of the Year. Which group is this? Uh, the Campaign. Okay. Yeah, we're nominated for Album of the Year. We're nominated for uh, Best Group. And then I'm nominated for uh, Labor of the Year, the CEO. Okay, big, big yeah. thanks, Pop, and big congrats. I see you. Thank you. You know, and the thing about that is just to intervene real quickly, you know, be lovely to take them awards home. But even if you don't, man, just yeah. being nominated, nominated is a blessing because people are recognizing the hard work and the talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, we won, well, we won those couple of those awards on the West Coast already. Uh, the JMO Radio Show, they have an award show over there. Word. Uh, I won the Pioneer Award in December, and my artist wholeheartedly won Best New Artist, which he's nominated for the same award at the ATL Rap Awards as well. Mm, y'all out here doing big, big things. Yeah, we're going to be in the move. deep. Yeah, we in the deep. <laughs> I already got like deep. three tables Super in the deep. VIP section. I'm thinking about getting the fourth one. Like, so let me ask you this. What was it about JaVinci that made you say, I need to bring him into my situation and make him my A&R? Well, first of all, it was his business mindset. Um, he had been watching me. He told I found all this out later. He wa- he basically watched my growth. Okay. So he watched my growth. He was able to break down, bro. I remember when you did this. So I started watching. Then you know some other ties that we got. You know some other ties we got in together too. Big ties. You know, <laughs> big ties. You know. Big time. So you know on that strength, I took a meeting with him. He paid me for a consultation. But when he paid me for a consultation, they already had what they wanted to do. He brought me Asia. They already had music. They had a plan. Yo, boom. At that time, I was like, well, this is what the label can do for you. At that time, we was with Sony Orchard, but then now we're over the Empire. So, um, ran running, dropped the record, boom. But his once I realized he had so much experience in the industry, my business started, business started flourishing. Now, like I say, we getting tour proposals. Yeah. I'm on the road a lot. And, and he eventually told me, like, bro, it's going to get so big, you ain't going to be able to do everything. No, absolutely. You're mm-hmm. going to, you have no choice but to have I had a to team. Delegate. So when it came to the music, and I look at how, like, I watch his sessions when he's in the studio with Asia. Yeah. And he's, he is a perfectionist. So hands on. Yes. And that's what I, I needed with my artists, because my artists bring me great records. But like I told them, I want to transition now. So I want radio hits. Yes. Absolutely. Radio is where it's at. Absolutely. Radio so we can get placements and things of that nature. Absolutely. So it just made sense. So I, I was like, bro, you know what? At this time, I'm like, I want you to step beside me, you know, on some A and R stuff, like, cause I can't. Everybody wants me to listen to music because <laughs> I can make the decision at that time. Right. So now I have a gateway before you can even get to me. You gotta Look, go through him. I know that's right. That's exactly what you have to do when you yeah. get to a certain point in your career. You have to have that gateway there. You yeah. have to. You don't want people to be able to get in direct contact with you. There's a fine line between being too accessible but not also being accessible right. exactly. enough. Exactly. And I had to learn that because I was always that guy. Like you see me in the club, hey. Um, approach me, you know, boo, yeah, of course. About. You ain't on no Hollywood like, stuff, but. but but see, now it's like when artists be like, Hey, I want to sit, I want you to listen to my music. I'm like, Well, like at this point in my career, now my time costs, 
Of course. So I'm like, yo, look, you ain't paying me to listen to your stuff. You're just paying me for my time. Right. But a lot of artists don't understand that. But like when you go to the studio, you pay for studio time. That's right. If you if look if I if I could had an opportunity to pay to go talk to Master P or somebody like that, I would pay to talk. Of to course, him. yeah. Because consultations for me personally. That's what got me where I am. The yeah. game that I got yeah. from talking to businessmen who were on a bigger level than me mm-hmm. gave me a blueprint to get to where I am right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. I understand it. You know, I understand it. Well, you guys sound like you make a great team. Yeah, we oh, do. Yeah. I mean, the, the the biggest thing, like I said, the way, I, I guess it's the way we were running our businesses. Like, with me being able to lock in with him and stand next to a CEO who kind of, you know, really started from, from the bottom and then just got motion out of his own pocket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To building a label budget. If you stand next to that, it's hard for you not to start your own label. Absolutely. Start label runners and put your own people in position. Like for instance, the same thing that he did with me as far as the A and R position, I did the same thing with Michael Knight over at Label Runners. So right, right. It's like that that's the that that that's the beauty of it. Like putting everybody in position. How many people can we put in position of power? is what your legacy is going to define at the end of the day. Forget all the, the extra stuff. You can have all the accolades and everything that you that you gain, but how many people did you put in position of power? How many families did you help feed? Like, yeah. I told somebody, I got out of the music business and got in the business of feeding families, and that's when everything changed for I me. I like that. So when I was like, look, what can I do with you to help you change your family, you change your family? Because we look at it as individual things, but everybody has tentacles, which would be your family. So you have a family. Right. I have a family, you have a family, you know, and everybody has family. So we're not just helping each other. It's That's three right. of us sitting here, but what we do and the moves that we actually make is going to help way more people. Absolutely. Because you're connected to so many people. So like I said, I got out of the music business and got in the business of helping families. And that's when everything just started looking up for me. But like I said, you know, this, this A&R role here to here tell you, I mean, I'm, I'll be calling him. <laughs> yeah. He's like, man, what's up? I'm sleep. I'm going to say this. Bro, wake up. I'm going to say this. Um, I'm real big on, I'm real big on energy. Yeah, me too. And and, and the reason why, and I and, so, and people always say, well, well, how do you know how to read energy? Energy is something you don't read. No. One thing that we can't control as humans is you can't control the human feeling. Feelings is something we can't control. Absolutely. Right? It can get triggered. Right. But we can't control it. Right, understood. So if you meet somebody and it's off, I look at that as like your check engine light coming on on your body. That's right. It's telling you, hey, something ain't something right. right. Something ain't exactly. right. Exactly. When I met Javinci, it was, usually when I meet people, I always keep my strap on me. You never know what you're walking into. Nah, for you real. I mean? Big like, facts. Real, Absolutely. Bro. I met, bro, and it was just like, you I was strapped up when you met me too? <laughs> <laughs> I was strapped. <laughs> look, you, you never I, know. But when I tell you when I met him, when I talked to him, immediately I was like, I don't know this dude. I was like, bro, I, like, Asia, I don't know him. This guy got long hair. Asia, like, what's Asia, he got going no, on? It was funny because that, that's funny because Asia was like, because when we got back in the car, I'm, yeah. Hey, she like, you strapped up in the meeting. I said, I don't know him around you, man. Like, Y'all know how protective I am over my artists. Like, I was like, man. But it was, it was a good funny. it was a good thing, though. You know what I mean? And, and who the thing? I can honestly tell you, my original team, nobody is with me for my original team. It's I think it's like that with most people. Most people. Yeah. But I will you say. You know that. You know that with me. Man, look. <laughs> and, and I will say. And nobody I will say. No. <laughs> what, we, what we got going on right now. <laughs> what we got going on right now, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have told you four years ago when I was starting the LLC that I'd be trademarked worldwide. We'd be doing mute, doing business internationally. That's all God right there yeah, blessing it you. Is, yeah. it is. And he put me with the right circle because we elevate each other. Absolutely. Because you know, he went from managing, now he got a whole label. Every so, move yeah. you make has to make sense. It has um, to make sense. Speaking of which, you know, you guys have a whole tour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got that. Yeah. We got a tour. You got a lot going a on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. let, let's dive into that, you know, because a lot of artists aspire to do that. They want to be on tour. They want to be signed to a label. They want to have an A&R to be able to sit down with. And you guys are providing all this stuff. Let's talk about the tour, you know. Well, I the, the funny thing and the story of how I even got into the tour is kind of a little bit more special. And it shows the it shows the, the unselfishness of, of this dude. So... Um, Paid Jake. Shout out Paid Jake. Shout out Jake. Um, Jake is, um, I already did business with Jake because of him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He's actually, Jake's actually the dude that brokered his, um, 
Empire. His um Empire deal. I just met so, him for the first time a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Like, I mean, we we were connected on social media, but we had yeah, a face to face. Finally, got to meet each other at the is, Ugly Money Summit. Yeah. So, <laughs> dude, dude is like definitely plugged. So, he um presented Jerry with a um with a proposal as far as doing a um tour with um Gucci's artist um Ten Seventeen artist Enchanting. So. They came up with the whole thing as far as, like, being investors. Um, he brought DJ Rome onto it. Um, and at the time, I wasn't really trying to do anything, but I was starting label runners. And um, I guess one of the investors backed out, so he's like, bro, I got to play for you. But he came to me, and I was, he was like, this is the play. I was like, say no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? What's the, what, how, mu- how much? Right. You know what I'm saying? They, they gave me the figure, gave me the number, went back, said it's a done deal. Let's done do deal. it. Um, so he brought me in on some – very being un, like being very unselfish because he knew I was starting a label as right, well. So understood. me being able to like, I started my label in January, and for me to tour. actually say I'm on tour with two more other situations pending right now, it's like <laughs> you know that that's that's moving fast. And he's like, hey man, look, in four years, like bro, I've been in business for four years, but you to move like that, I said, man, this is so it's scary at the same time, but it's the most. Most, um, you know, rejuvenating thing because I got the right team around me. So Absolutely. Once I, once I jumped on, I jumped in head first, and you know, we um pulled up on pulled up on enchanting, dropped that bag, you know, got everything started, and and now we, now, you know, we off to the races. But that was that's my point of view of it. I just I just like to say that because he did bring me on on some. You know, I'm going to help your company, too. Absolutely. You know and it's saying? rare to find yeah. people like that. Like you said, you feed on people's energy. I'm the same way, too. Like, I've, I'm quick to cut someone off unapologetically oh, yeah. if oh, yeah. our vibe is not there. Because what's the point? You know, they, they're, right. all they're going to do is bring, you know, bad vibes to your business. And, mm-hmm. you know, you got to cut people off like that. And then yep. bring people in like JaVinci who are genuinely want to help the situation. Right. And you know the crazy thing I run into a lot? Now, I was just telling him this on the way here. First of all, shout out DJ Rome. He tapped in watching. Shout out my partner, man. He's in Indiana. He's my, <laughs> shout he's, out DJ Rome. He's also a fleet DJ as well. Shout out to the fl- whole fleet DJs. Yeah, we met That's fleet. how we met we was met through the, the fleet oh, DJs. Man. Shout, shout out to fleet, man. Show was. Exactly shout out to classic. Shout out to classic. Shout, shout out yeah. to classic. classic, man. Yeah. That's my big brother. That's my dog, man. <laughs> I run into a lot of, like, I always say I'm like, people are entitled to make decisions on their life. Yeah. So even if it's like we cool today, it, it, like I was telling him, if he tell me, AJ, well, I think I want to branch off and do my own thing, I can't get mad at him for making that decision for him. Of course. You know what I'm running to? Yes. People Please would make, speak on this. People would make decisions to cut you off. You respect it, and they get mad at you for respecting the decision that they made on their life. Man. I'm not going to get mad that you tell me you don't want to rock with me no more. Okay, you know what? Business changing. One thing about business is this. People say, when you get the money, don't change. Look, I changed. No, you you're supposed I to changed. level up. I leveled up. I, I, changed. I changed. Yes. I am not the same. Look, my cars, when, when my bank account got bigger, when my house got bigger, my kids got older, my responsibilities, my thought process changed. Of course. Because now, when you go from not being able to get a credit card to getting American Express offers, well, you ain't worried about when you want to do what you want to do, you can do it. Man. I want to maintain that lifestyle. Absolutely. I don't want to have it and lose it. Right. You know Fast. So I'm going to change my thought process once I get it because it's, I always heard the saying, it's easy to get it. It's harder to maintain it. Yes, yeah, harder to keep it and maintain it for I sure. I understand it now. That same thing with relationships. Yeah. All that. It's yeah. all, there's so much that you have to change. You're not just, mm-hmm. you know, I know you said you were divorced, but when you were married, you weren't the same person you was, you know, when you nah, married her. And, it, yeah. And you, and when you go through stuff like that, you're willing to, you know what you're willing to put up with and what you're not. Absolutely. To put up with. Facts. So I'm on this thing now. I always tell them, like, when people, like, when artists say, hey, I want to leave, I don't get mad. Hey, my brother, I wish you the best. Uh, listen, you know yes. Changed? But see, but I, th- I think now that, that when, when you say that, it's like I think people look, have such a negative connotation when you say you've changed. Like you're supposed to change. You're supposed to. I think change is only looked at as a negative when you view change as running away from you. Right. Meaning that yes. somebody's changing and they're elevating and you are stuck in the same position. Their change is now your agony. Mm-hmm. Opposed to when it's like, you know, if, if, if you – you he comes along and says, "Man, I'm about to do this now. I'm about to shift," and he elevating. I'm cool with that. Yeah. But I'm in a position to where his elevation is tied to my elevation right now. Mm-hmm. So 
you know, and even if it's not, and he's saying, man, I'm going to do this with the company, or I'm going to start this company over here, that's elevation. I shouldn't look at that as a negative thing. Of course right? not. Because, right. you know, because I don't feel like that change is running away from me. Now, if I have this mindset where he's elevating and I'm not elevating, which is what a lot of people have. So when they say you've changed, they're mad that your change is running away from them. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. So well, that's that's a difference. But I think like if you come into his situation and and he levels up, that should make you happy because it makes it to me like you came in and helped his situation to yeah. be able to level up. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But, but people do absolutely. get disgruntled because I've been in situations where but. I've left because it made sense for me. It was a better opportunity, mm, and they man. get disgruntled, and I'm like, you're not happy for my success. Yeah. You but know. See, this is what I understood about business, and here's where. There's no book you can buy that explains how we do business. No, there is definitely. I used to write my, one. He's my A and R. He's my A and R. But when we went on this tour, everybody has their own situation. So it's not yep. me breaking down the bag, mm. right? And then I'm giving them no. I got my own bag. He got his right. own bag. Yep, yep. Wrong got his own bag. Yep. I right. got my own bag. Exactly. But guess what? We all still under the same umbrella. So it was kind of like I was watching this um this video that Dame Dash had made. He was like. I don't want to be. I don't want to make workers. I want to make bosses, because the more money that we have in the circle, the more powerful the whole movement is. Absolutely. And I, I look. People say what they want to by name dash. I love that thought process because if I'm the one with the money, and then I gotta break it down every time, that means that makes the the movement less powerful because I'm giving right. the workers their portion, so I have less money to work with. That's right. Versus if everybody comes in, okay, I got 50000 I got 50000 That's 150000 Right. Exactly. Everybody got 50000 It's a level playing field. Well, guess what? We can go into an investment. It only costs, it only costs 50000 Right. We still got plenty of capital to fall on. That's and right. And we already yeah. met to go. Everybody, and we got say-so, and we all going to look at it from different angles on how we can make it successful. Mm -hmm. Versus one man having all the money, and I'm breaking it down for everybody. Right. And the fact that they're go-getters, and they go just as hard as me keeps me going when you the main right. person and you always mm -hmm. pushing people you get tired after a while no matter how much we move together it's like it's 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 a beautiful thing seeing yeah. when you look at the when you look at the flyer and it says ruthless killer and it says label runners and it says family, family before, before fame. fame yeah you know that all three of us once again have our own our own position and our own even amount you know what i'm saying well rome gonna take home his and yeah jerry gonna take home his i'm gonna take home mine yeah and it's not like a there's there's no fight on that, and most people are just like, hey, we're going to go in as this. Right. And this is what this is going to be. And we're like, nah, we're promoting everything. Everybody's name is going to be on that because mm -hmm. everybody's going to put in their share. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, granted, is it easy to get in a, in a, in a circle like that? No, because <laughs> you have to actually be able to have the capital and the, the cash to actually move in that manner and for it to make sense. So I don't want anybody to just think that we can just, you know, we just jump in to do business with anybody this way. Right. Because it has to make it sense. It has to make sense. And it all makes sense because we all have positions within his company, but we all have different things. And there's things with my company that he helps me with and vice versa. And like, there's all types of things, ways that we help each other, but it's, there is no book to really see how we actually do this, but you most know. certainly not. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what are some of the things that we can expect? You know, we're still fairly early in 2022 from both of your labels. I know that there's a lot, but you know, give us some of the highlights that we can expect well, we that you can talk about. Well, you know, you can catch us. Uh, I know next week I got to plug this in because I rock with Street Sweeper, but you can catch us real deep next week with uh, and um, at your ATL Rap Awards. Yep. Um, after that. Tour pop off the following week. So we're going to be touring from May to the end of June. Mm. July, we will be at the Fleet DJs Music Conference. We've already, we're looking for Airbnb now because hotels just ain't going to be big enough. Um, <laughs> after that, um, probably going to get into some more shows, give some artists more opportunities. Um, I do got a big show coming up that's in the works right now. We're probably looking at uh, $10,000 we're going to give away. But you doing it out here in the Atlanta area? Yeah, we're going to travel with. I like to travel, so yeah. I don't like one thing about me. I don't like to hit just one spot. I like to travel to, to spread the opportunity because it might be that diamond in the rough that you might miss. Of yep. course, absolutely. You know, and everybody don't come to Atlanta, so I'm I'm one of the few CEOs. If my my company's on the flyer, I'm in the building. So you know what I'm saying. So it's so you know you get a lot of oh you know you know how you run into it. Some people are always oh, a scam or well, mm -hmm. it ain't never a scam if I'm there. 
So you put in a face and you put in a responsibility in the building. So there's no way you can ever say my situation is a scam. So okay. let me ask you about that because I just want to, I want to squash that right now because the thing about, and this is coming because I hear it from artists all the time. Mm -hmm. I do showcases myself. Mm -hmm. I totally know that they're not a scam because if not for nothing, it's a good networking opportunity. Yes. It helps build up their stage presence. Yes. They get to meet, you know, it's just a lot that can come out of it. But there's artists out here and I hear it. I'm mm -hmm. not paying to perform at a showcase. They're disgruntled about stuff like that. Um, you know, kill that stigma let right me, now. Let me, let me, <laughs> let me, let me, let, and I can't speak on everybody. Of course. I speak on me. Of course. And that, that's where I want you to go with I it. I always get industry. I, I had, I got this showcase called Who Got the Flavor. We toured last year. We okay. toured from the South to the West, from, mm -hmm. from Georgia, Florida to Las Vegas. We had the finale here in West Atlanta. Last year. Now, wh what I did, my concept was, I did a couple things. Every artist that won, I took them to the next city, the headline, I paid them, and then you automatically went to the finale to get a record deal. And he just, he put them on a plane. I put them on planes and all <laughs> kind of on stuff. A plane. <laughs> like, won, not, 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 not the, the Greyhound bus. No, no, nah, nah, you fly, <laughs> yeah, look, nah, no, they were on the same, the same flight I was You flew on. them out. Yeah, I flew them out and everything. Yeah. yeah. And I paid you. <laughs> they got flewed out, y'all. Yeah, they got flewed out. <laughs> so, and think of it now, we doing this, we doing this independently. I don't have no backing or investors. This is mm -hmm. my money. So, I would take money that I would make from showcases and I'll put it right back into the artist. That's what you got to do, yeah, man. Yeah. Facts. People Absolutely. Think, people think I'll be spending, man, look, that money don't, you know, my other situations is what fund me personally. Right. This is for y'all. Yes. It's I love on. that. I love that you do that. That's like real deal. Genuine right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. How many artists we sent to fleet last year to perform? Ooh, like Just four? off music reviews. Like four? Like four, four artists. That's that's yeah. amazing yeah. that you're providing those type of opportunities. But uh, and you know, and a lot of people still get mad at me. I know they let's do. Get in, let's get into. I that. know uh, yeah. they do. The scam part. Let's get into that. Yeah, okay. let's talk about that. How I avoid those conversations. For one, I never particularly judge my events. Like even with the finale, I didn't have because a hand they're gonna in. say it's rigged. Yeah, and, and he already had them picked. And yeah. I've heard it all. And the person who <laughs> won my finale was the person nobody expected. But I will tell you this, and I talked to him last night. As a matter of fact, I just paid for his room for the award show next week. I told I told my all my people before we left my house. I said, my gut is telling me the person that's gonna win tonight is somebody we least expect. And it was. It was. It was the least expected. Because even me, not being not being judgmental, but I even had my idea who I thought was gonna win. Right. So you you place judges there, and they completely yeah, and they handle it. They come back and tell. That's me That's the only why. way you can really genuinely have a, yeah. a real deal outcome is you got to have other people who are unbiased about yeah. the situation. Now, some situations I can't speak on. Like I have seen some stuff like. Like the, the yo guy, the situation with the whole open verse thing. I have seen some stuff like that, but that's not my situation. It is what it is. But with me, I will say, if you come to one of my events, it's straight up whoever puts on the show gonna win. Like just like we just did, who got the flavor in Albany in what month or two ago? Okay. Yeah. A dude from Alabama won. I've never even stepped foot in Alabama. I even had somebody come and say hey, somebody was trying to say it was rigged. I said, well, let me dispel that now. Let me show you how crazy they sound. Why would I go to my hometown, bring an artist that I've never met from a state I've never did an event in, and rob the artist from my city? Yeah, exactly. How does that make you look? I got a different outlook on all of these artists who talk about it. And this yeah. is the but the artists got to step their game speaking. up. Artists got to step their game Thank up you. And, and don't want to hear that. Every artist Thank feels, you. look, you're supposed to feel that way, artists. <laughs> Let me say this. You're supposed to feel like you're the best thing since sliced bread. But you're not everybody's hating on you just because they don't like your music. Here's, here's my <laughs> yes. thing, too. Perception is reality, right? Right. So you remember, like, okay, you 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 were in Atlanta around this time where, uh, prime example, you remember when Cool America <laughs> yeah. was coming up? Yep. They had flyers, posters, a team with them. Man, their, I mean, their presence was, was crazy. Rap, they had everything. Mm -hmm. These artists will go to a showcase Will not network with nobody. Won't talk to nobody. Won't say nothing. Won't have anything promoting themselves. 
their their following is low. They didn't bring anybody with them. They didn't do anything like that. And then they feel like they're the ones that's actually supposed to win. If you actually have a presence a presence in the building, excuse me, like if you have a presence in the building, trust me, that will sway yes. the thought process of the judges because they feel like you are on to something. Absolutely. It doesn't always come down to just who has the best song or who has the best music because a lot of the music that these people are doing at these showcases all sound the same, which is the reason why I always tell artists, please, Put some put some originality into your stuff. Like I, like I really take it to heart because I remember being one of those mm-hmm. artists, but I also remember being in the building with ten plus people. I also remember being in the building with flyers, posters, CDs, handouts, All that. everything. I remember being that artist who invested in my career. Did and you take my, your shirt off? I, I I did that a lot. <laughs> um, but, but like I'm, I was the artist who invested in my image. I invested in my sound. I invested in he everything. Said I did that a lot. You know, I did that a lot. Look, I'm gonna but say this: these artists do not do that, and then they were like, "Well, it's rigged." No, you just not good enough and your image sucks now you want to fix that then maybe you might win the next showcase but sometimes i've seen an artist come in with a presence that Mm -hmm. won and beat an artist that had better music but his presence was just undeniable absolutely there's stars and then there's people who don't shine at all that's right Mm -hmm. i'll say this I'm probably going to get a couple phone calls about this next statement. (laughs) But if artists fluffed their presence as much as they fluffed their Spotify numbers, (sighs) it will make a difference. (sighs) No, I'm just saying. It's a whole lot of rap. No, 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 no. Because, no, because, no, because, and and the reason why I say that is this, because I get a lot of artists that come to me. I got three million streams on this. So I put you on the event. You got five people with you. So where are your three million streams coming from? Right. Yes. Like people, they people bought and pay for them. People don't understand. <laughs> Look, you Man. invest money in yourself, this, that, this, whatever you want to. That's cool. Me, I use Google Ads. I do big Google Ad campaigns. Yep, absolutely. Do I know who clicked my Google Ads? No, but I see the bill every month when they come in. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is this right here. If artists put as much into fluffing their image versus fluffing Spotify numbers, because think about it. If you're competing to win in, in, in person, I don't care about your Spotify number. That's right. If you got four, five million streams, why are you not signed yet? Exactly. Why are you in the yes. showcase if you got five million streams? Right. Why is Thank that you. song not, I got satellite radio. Why is that song not on satellite radio if it's this hot? Exactly. Why is it not trending on TikTok if it's that hot? Thank you. What is your campaign to even get? Explain to me how you get three, four, five million streams. Tell and if me. your outfit costs more than the than what you put into your actual <laughs> team and your promotion and all that flag. stuff. Big red flag. Red I be flag. seeing some dudes, like, especially here in Atlanta, bro, they be fresh as I don't know what. They belt. Called, that belt that you got on <laughs> is your is your stand-up. That's your promotion. That's right. your, your logo in everybody's right. face and all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I walk in the building and I see you on – you walk in the building, Dave, you're going to see his face before you see him yep. because – he has promotional material yeah, the, always the, in the building. The big retractable is going to exactly. be there. Exactly. Like, I mean, just, just something like – I just maybe I come from a different era, and I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm glad to be the old guy now because I don't, I'm glad to be yeah. the old guy. Yeah. Like I just come from an era where there was your your image and what you actually your you were a billboard, you mm-hmm. were a walking billboard, and you really had to put a lot into yourself. Like these artists, like for instance, artists that's coming out on this tour. There's independent artists that's actually performing on this tour, mm-hmm. right? Um, understand this, enchanting is signed yes. and got a buzz and got movement, yeah. okay? Mellow Rex signed, got movement, got a buzz. If you don't, you need to be trying to see how can I look like that or outshine that. You're probably not going to outshine it because, of course, their budgets are a little bit different. Right, absolutely. But at the end of the day, you're not them. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to get to that point. So come Come ready to actually perform. Come ready to actually show yourself and network and really put yourself in people's faces. Get creative with it. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you hand out pins. I don't care if you hand out stress balls. Whatever you got to do to actually make yourself stand out, make sure that you're actually doing this. We kick off in Atlanta. and You already know. Yeah, Atlanta's and already sold out. Atlanta's already sold out. Check your phone. You know what I'm saying? So since Atlanta's already sold out, you already know what it's going to look like in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. So come ready. Come ready. Like, just, I'm going to drop a business gym real quick. Yeah, please do, because these people need that. Artists, independent. A lot of artists like to be 
I'm independent. I'm independent. I'm mm-hmm. independent. Okay, let me explain to you what independent mean. Ooh. To me, independent only tells me you are the label. Yep. So when somebody come to you and put a price tag on something that you want, don't feel offended. Right. You are, you are the label. You are independent. Now, my artist, I'm an independent label owner. So let me explain to you what that is. Like, my artists are wholehearted. You know, he got the A&R, they came up with this whole ski scheme. So, I'm on vacation Black in hearts. the mountains. <laughs> I'm on vacation in the mountains, and when they, when they presented it to me, it made sense. So, as a CEO label owner, I had my artist call the videographer of his choice. And cut the check like I that. I cut the check like that from the mountains. Yesterday, he shot the video. I already got the marketing strategy for what we're going to do when we get ready to drop the video. Now, my artist has say so when we going to drop it. Like, even when we did the cover, I had the designer and the artist on three-way. We on three-way discussing how this is going to happen. I'm paying for everything, but I want to make sure his input is there. Of course. So, my artist is a signed artist. Ma, I got your shirt, too. Don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> but, um, so, my artist is a signed artist. I'm an independent label owner because... There's no external funds that fund what I do. So any money spent on my artists, it comes for me. So my relationship with my artists is a little bit more personal because just like you, people have money in stocks, I have money in my artists. Right. Mm-hmm. So Those I, are like your stocks. Yeah, so I tell, <laughs> I, tell my, I tell independent artists all the time, whatever you do, if you're not signed, you're going to pay for it. So just like my artists, I paid, we dropped 12000 to hit this tour. That was an investment. But my artists are performing on every day. Yeah. They didn't have to come out their money for none of that. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. I've never been on tour as an artist. But I'm heading a tour as a CEO. Yeah. But I'm so proud because I took my artists who believed in me with their careers and I'm able to provide them with this opportunity. Right. Absolutely. So it's, it's rewarding to them. They're going to get an experience that, that's probably going to be 30 years from now. They can say, when I did music. I was on a tour. Exactly. And, you know. and that type of stuff has to be documented because when they do blow up, yeah. they oh, got to have a story to document, tell. Right. I got two cameramen that's in the crew. We document road trips, be the funniest. <laughs> Shout out Big O, Orlando. Because, uh, oh, I ain't no telling what going to happen with him and Black Leo when they get together. I always book them two together because the comedy comes from them. <laughs> I'm usually the quiet one, just surveying the room. Just I might smile here and there, you know. But it's really about them. Right. This for me is, is more business for me. Like, like I tell them all the time, y'all the artists. One thing I never do when I'm on the road, I never share a room with my artists because I was an artist. Artists have fun on the road. And of course they do. They, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the old head. I'll go drink my gold bottle. All right. Once the lights start dimming, all right, y'all don't go to my room to go to bed. Right. I call home, make sure family's straight. Knock off, get ready for the next day. I'm usually calling everybody, hey, y'all up, man. Right. I'm going to go get some breakfast, boom. You know. So, just that part, I want artists to understand. At the end of the day, y'all, when you're independent, if you stand on being independent, don't get mad when independent situations come to you. Because you you are, are the, the label. label. So if you go to another label who has motion and you're trying to meet with their head, nine times out of ten, you're going to have to pay to get his time. Right. right. And like my A&Rs. They charge for their time now. Of course. Yes. You know, we have time we have, and the yeah. knowledge that they provide. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I didn't I didn't become an award winning artist. I, d- I don't have an award winning label without being business minded. That's right. So at the end of the day, friendships aside, business is business. Man. Like, we cool all day, but when we talk business, we handle the businesses, then we get into the friendship. Period. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't have, mix the two. No. Nah. But two. once you once you like You can have both, what people, but you don't mix don't them. Don't understand too, like when you're talking about being independent. There's a lot of money that's going back and forth between yes. the three of us. Like, that's there's right. There's a lot of money lot that of money. gets a, a lot of salaries, money. Salaries, yearly salaries. <laughs> that gets transferred <laughs> in between the three of us. The only problem is, like, I think when you when you start to deal with that amount of money, the pressure is a little bit different because it's not coming from a certain backing or, yeah. or like, and it's right. just dropped on you. It's like the risk is higher. Yeah. So it's three independent labels operating to make one actually actual big situation. So, you know, when you start talking about us and then adding somebody like Pay Jake and then all the other investors like that even like went on this tour, this, this mm-hmm. is on us. So we understand what taking that risk means. That's right. Yeah. As independent label owners, like we understand what that risk is. And mm-hmm. a lot of people just scream, I want to stay independent because you're listening to everybody online telling you record 
business stuff that's not even a part of the record business um, telling you, well, you need to stay independent and don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. There are some artists who really need a label to get funding because they don't have any money to right. Fund they them. need a machine behind they them. They need a machine behind them. So don't don't just don't get caught up in the whole I'm gonna be independent unless you are ready to actually be independent and then take your independent situation and then partner with a major mm-hmm. and do things of that nature right. to actually create bigger situations think, for you and your think team. Think about this. A lot of the major artists who are independent, when did they go independent? After their first deal or second deal or, or after their career just wasn't what it seems doing what it was supposed to yeah you're right think about it when you get somebody who starts independent eventually they go major and i'm gonna tell you honestly for me that's my goal now and i'm gonna tell you why when we walk in that atlantic record studio with me enchanted yeah my name was on an atlantic records list you can't get in their studio unless your name is on a guest list. right Mm -hmm. when i seen when i've never been in the studio and was greeted by mass security (laughs) First of all, I'm walking in like, all right, uh, first we had to get buzzed in the gate. That was one. I have. So yes. I'm like, uh, <laughs> then they called my name, like, yeah, we here. We met them in the back. And just that whole environment, I'm like, this is what separates independent from major. Exactly. You, Everybody don't have access to These are the major. big boys These over the here. Big boys. Yeah. I got just a little taste of that. And I'm like, you know what? Immediately when we got done, when the business was handled, when she signed that deal that let us take her, uh, take her on tour, when the, when the money on the wood was good, <laughs> I immediately called. I said, bro, we going major. Yeah. He was like, well, what, what, what's up? I said, bro, what I just experienced. I want that. I want that. Nah, for real. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. You have, to, you have to have those type of experiences sometimes in order to yeah. entice you, put that motivation behind you. Not to say you're not motivated, but okay. you're like, now I got a taste of that. I want that. Yeah, and and I and I and look, immediately I told him I said, and that's when the A and R move made sense. I said, bro, the records got to be bigger now. Yeah, I mm-hmm. said everything we touch, the marketing campaigns behind them, radio, and we gonna stream over a million on everything we drop this year. Yeah, I don't care. My the way I'm making money now, the way we making money now, I can afford to do it. But the artists got to meet me halfway and put in the work yeah. though. It ain't me putting in the money and you not doing that. No, you're going to get on a press run because money's being put into you. That All that comes with this. Nah, for real. They got to put that it. work in because a lot of them don't want to do that. They want to yeah. skip all them steps. Nah, you got to take the steps. That's why I, I love my artist wholehearted, and he grew with my company. Yeah. So when I say he grew with my company, I picked him. I found him off a music review. A music, I just did Where a, were you doing the review at? Man, I did it on Facebook. I told, I gave out an email. I said, look, send me this music here. I'm going to listen to every song sent. When I tell you I will never do that again, (laughs) it was so much music. But out of all the artists that were sent to me, he stuck out. I didn't even know he was from Albany. Right. I was like, he sounds different. Read your text message. Oh. He sounds different. I'm sorry, y'all. No, my my next guest is outside. Can you put him in the front real quick? That's I that <laughs> as I was trying not to interrupt the interview. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, He's good. sitting outside. If you don't mind, have him just sit in the front lobby. I'm sorry. Go ahead. His but interview yeah. was supposed to start already, but we run a little late. Oh, my bad. <laughs> but yeah, but um, I found him, and he was doing music, but we kind of gave him an identity together because he changed from where he was where he is now yeah. yeah and so i always tell him like it's always gonna be more pressure on you because when P- it was kind of like when puffy found biggie right so that he's kind of like my biggie no that's legendary you know and you guys yeah. grow together and we grow together so he's in some of his situations the rooms he walk in. i used to always walk him in the rooms i was in but he was quiet yeah and he was like why he's so quiet i'm like because He's learning. And he's on tour as well, too. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's on tour. Well, yeah. let's talk a little bit, because we got to get up out of here. My I next guest it. is here. But um, let's talk a little bit about the tour. What day does it officially kick off? May the 7th. May 7th. Where does it kick off? Atlanta. Atlanta. Are there, are there opportunities for other artists to somehow get involved with it? Yes. Well, not for the Atlanta show, no. Yeah, Atlanta but the other closed, dates, yeah. yeah. But the artists got to understand too. For the artists who purchase a performance slot, okay. So there are performance we, slot yes. opportunities. We are giving, we are giving away to the best performer of the tour. We are going to give away five thousand dollars cash, and we're going to get. And Zaytoven agreed to have a one-on-one meeting. That's a blessing. With that yeah. artist, you really out here blessing people. Yeah, but you, you in order for you to win the lottery, you got to buy a ticket. 
Nah, for real. I, listen, you got to pay to play. Like, yeah. nothing mm-hmm. out here is free. And nothing. Like, that. that's probably, I'm sure you guys deal with it, and I do mm-hmm. too. That will drain you. People think just because they know you mm-hmm. that, like, nobody knows us, owes us anything. Like, no. I pay for everything I do. Yes. You pay you for too. everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, once, but like I said, once you step off the porch and then you put that money up, it's a different ball game. You really yeah. don't want to deal with anybody who doesn't have that same type of mindset. Absolutely. So definitely artists, like I me, mean, it's a big opportunity for artists, you know what I'm saying, to actually come, you know, network, number one, mm-hmm. um, get a chance to actually be in a room with some stars, get a chance to actually, you know, really interact. Like definitely you want to go to um, – and, uh, was it enchanting summer tour dot com yeah. to actually get your tickets? Mm-hmm. Um, see what cities we actually come into. Uh, definitely, I know we're going to Atlanta, then we go to Albany, and then we go up to Charlotte. You know, I'm ready for Charlotte. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm ready for Charlotte. That's the stomping grounds, yeah, huh? Yeah, man, I'm ready Charlotte, for Charlotte. Charlotte, out two dates in Alabama. Then we got we gonna end in Dallas, Texas. Though. Yeah, and yeah. Dallas is a great city too for for independent artists. There's yeah. a lot and there's a of talent up there. Mansion party in Miami, in Miami <laughs> on the yeah. tour. Yeah. <laughs> so for anybody that's tapped in, tuned in, that wants to get in tune with what you guys got going on, tell them where they can follow you and keep up with you. Follow Ruthless Killer Records. You can Google us. You Google Ruthless Killer Records if you go on TikTok, if you go on Facebook, if you go on Instagram. It's Ruthless Killer Records. All the same. If you're trying to follow me directly. J A G number two R K R all the way across the board. Um, that that's pretty much it for me. Just ruthless killer and J A G two R K R. Reach out to me at Javinci Royal underscore B S, or reach out to me at Label Runners on Instagram. But definitely artists really tap in. Yeah. Reach out to us. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of good things coming, especially with this tour, and there's some opportunities that's beyond the tour that we really want to tap artists in yes. with. So definitely tap in with us. Like I said, May 7th, we kick off. Get your tickets. Yeah. All that. Man. I'll just tell artists this before we get out of here. After this tour, I understand it takes money to be an artist. So a lot of my showcases after this, we actually going to be giving away cash prizes. Man. Just to help. With hoping that they spend it the but right way. Starting with $10,000. But you but you could offer them a cash prize mm-hmm. and then maybe a consultation along with it so you could help them, teach them how they need to be spending that, that money. Comes along yeah, with that like anytime comes we actually, any artist that wins something, they like artists can tell you, like they'll hit me up. Like still artists that have one who got the flavor will hit me up yeah. still. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now it's like, Beyond that initial win, you know, it's a yeah. Thing, but like, but definitely, like, yeah, we we tap in with our. It's about helping the artist. We yeah. were there before. We understand what it is. So, like I said, not only is this thing about you know really putting in chanting, um, taking her through the roof. Um, it's really big. Um, some big things for her too coming. But we really want to you know yeah. tap in with um, artists and make sure that they you know can see platforms like this and continue to do this down the line. Facts, man. Well, I appreciate y'all being no here problem, today. We about to get up out of here, y'all. Bet. Wholehearted ski coming soon. Clothing line on the way. Y'all be good. <laughs> <laughs>